of Pat Home with Galabat, where we bring the world to you. I am coming off the most amazing summer where I spent time in the Baltic region in Europe. I spent time in Asia going to the Philippines for the first time, which is where my parents are from. And then I ended it with my first vacation since starting my company in the south of France. And I have to say, while I love coming back to New York City, I'm a little nostalgic for how amazing my summer was at the Hotel de Cop. And so I'm here at the French Cheese Board in Soho, and Jason Sobosinski, who is one of the top experts in cheese, is going to show us around a French cheese board. So come on in. Hey. Hi. How's it going? Good, how are you? Welcome to the French Cheese Board. Thank you so much. I'm Christine. I'm with Galavant. Jason. And I was looking for cheese. Am I in the right spot? You are. Are you ready to get your goat on? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a new one. Well, Jason, my expectations were very high because I read in your bio that you're a fromologist, which sounds very scientific. Technically, that word means uh, someone who collects cheese labels. Cheese labels? Cheese labels, which I do. So, so you go to different parts of the world and you pick up cheese at a shop, or what does that mean? Well, I have my own cheese shop and we bring cheeses in uh, and then I save those labels. Uh, some of them are from the cheeses you see here. And how did you get involved with being such a cheese connoisseur and cheese aficionado? So I believe that every cheese has a story uh, and I went to Boston University and got a master's degree in gastronomy and had a concentration on cheese. So when I went to college, I had no idea they had cool majors like that. Otherwise, I certainly would have signed up. Well, there's lots of eating and drinking, so I was very good at it. And speaking of which, my expectations also were very high when I heard about your expertise in cheese, and you are not disappointing. We have some really amazing cheese here. Yeah, this is uh, a really awesome French goat cheese holiday cheese board that I put together with a ton of different types of French goat cheeses, different sizes, different colors and textures uh, from different regions all over France, all 100% goat cheese. So I was just in France at the Hotel de Cop where I took my first vacation in seven years since starting my company. You would think that working and travel, you'd be taking vacations all the time. And I just ate cheese like there was no tomorrow. You goat in the right cheese, place. cow cheese, you name it, sheep's cheese. But it didn't always agree with my stomach. Okay. Um, so now that I'm back and I want to entertain here at home, I heard that goat cheese is actually a little bit easier on you than some yeah. of the other cheeses. Yeah, go goat cheese is easier to digest. Um, it has to do with the way the fatty acids break down. Basically, if you're lactose intolerant, uh, you have a much better chance of handling goat's milk. So. These kind of cheeses, which I love to present for holidays because they are a lot lighter, a lot brighter, they've got a nice acidic tang, and you're gonna eat a lot of very rich and you know big flavors for the holidays. So start with a really beautiful goat cheese. I've got a uh, Delice de Poitou right here. This Ooh. is a gorgeous goat cheese. It's shaped in a little oval um, type shape, and it's uh, coated in ash on the outside. So why would you coat a cheese in ash? So the tradition of coating uh, cheeses in, in ash is actually a way to keep flies off of the cheese. Um, it creates a really cool looking rind. Uh, it doesn't actually impart a ton of flavor, although there is a little bit of salt. And in this particular cheese, uh, penicillium added in there to give it that wrinkly rind. So can you eat the rind? You can absolutely eat the rind. All of these cheeses here are edible rinds. Well, I would love to see what this looks like inside. Yeah, I want to show you uh, sort of how to cup one of these small format cheeses. Now, if you were to start on this end and cut your way through, you'd really be missing out on the center of the cheese. So what I recommend is to cut even slices so that you have even distribution so everyone gets a little bit of that center piece. So I had no idea that the cheese tastes differently in different sections of Well, remember the, the, the cheese is aging and as it ages, you can see here, the rind has created a barrier so that lactic acid moves its way out, hits that rind, and begins to cook the outside, giving you two different textures, one that's sort of pillowy and, and chalky, and one that's like a cream layer. And so we want to make sure that everyone gets a little piece of that. So you want to cut slices that are even all the way through so that everyone's getting a little bit of that center as well. Here's a piece for you. Oh, well, this is pretty. Look at this. And even better than learning about cheese, I actually love eating it. Cheers. Cheers. 
it'll never cease to amaze me how many different elements there are to goat cheese. When I first had goat cheese, I thought that it was just the logs that you would get at a store. I had no idea there was so much diversity and so many different flavors and textures that you can actually have with goat cheese. All of them have their own little personalities. Um, I've got Shabby Shudu Pot 2. This one's a really beautiful sort of truncated, uh, I don't know what that cylinder you want to call that? Yeah, kind of um, like a cylinder cone. I've got pyramids here. This one has uh, herbs whipped throughout. We've got little medallions that are awesome for entertaining. We've got a traditional aged uh, log, which you've seen before. This one actually has been aged though, so you can see the outside has a little bit of rind to it. And again, if we were to cut into this, you're gonna see those two different layers from the center to the cream line. And you'll notice on this board, you don't see any grapes. This is a holiday cheese board. So I use seasonal fruits. I've got some poached pears, I've got some plouts, I've got some Italian plums, different kinds of hazelnuts and almonds, some pomegranate, um, just, you know, different fruits of the season so that we don't have to always go straight to grapes or strawberries. We can think about what is available right now as we go into fall and into winter. And I love pairing these types of things with goat cheeses because the goat cheese has such a bright and acidic pop. Well, especially for the holidays, even Thanksgiving. Like, I try not to eat too many of the aperos right before the big meal, but you can't help it. I mean, you're starving. It takes forever to cook a turkey. And at least like with the goat cheese, it's relatively light. And then I love how you're pairing very fall type fruits here. It's beautiful and it makes sense. If you were to come to my house for the holidays, I would typically put out one cheese, like this Delice de Poitou, with a bottle, probably of bubbly. I love to start the evening off with bubbles, gets people kind of excited, gets your taste buds going. And that's it. And then later on in the evening, I put out a big board like this so that everyone could sit down and dig in. Having cheese at the end of the evening is a really way, great way to digest as well. Well, that's normally how I serve my French cheese plate anyways. I serve it closer to the dessert time. So I actually serve it right before our sweets. Nice. So it sounds like we can actually work together and cook a meal. Yeah, speaking of, uh, do you ever do any cheese cooking? I was going to ask you, are there recipes that you can do with goat cheese besides these beautiful cheese boards? Yeah, and I'd love to show you one if you're interested. I'm game. All right, let's check it out. All right, so I've got this nifty little pan called a barbaclet, and essentially you just put it over a burner, or if you're outside, you can put it over a barbecue, and it's nonstick. And so we're gonna put a really special French goat cheese onto this barbaclette and we're gonna melt it and make raclette, which except. is potatoes, which, except we're not using raclette. Exactly, we're using goat cheese. Right, we're using this, this cheese, this is uh, Tom Chabrin. This is, a lot of people don't think goat cheeses come like this. They do. This is a beautiful goat cheese from the Basque region and it melts really, really nicely. So we're gonna go ahead, pop it onto here. Make sure, we're gonna turn it on. All right. Let it get really nice and melty. In the meantime, uh, I've chopped up some cornichons, little gherkin pickles. I've got some grainy mustard. I've got some fresh chopped red onion, and I've got some speck, which is awesome cured ham. And then we've got some really nice fresh parsley. Put it on top, make it look pretty. And if you wouldn't mind grabbing some of the roasted potatoes that I've got in the oven right behind you. Oh, and you said potatoes. Besides cheese, potatoes are my weakness. Yeah. Ooh, and these are roasting right up. You know what I love is that you actually roasted these potatoes versus some of the raclette recipes that I've had, they've been boiled potatoes. Yeah, I, I just prefer a roasted potato. You can put them down right here on the marble. Um, just because it gives a little more crispiness, a little more of that flavor, concentrate of the potato. Anything in that pan or is it just no, the it's, cheese? No, uh, it's just the cheese and if you look, I'll flip it over so you can see. It gets kind of like really nice and toasty. Okay, well that is what I am talking about. <laughs> nice and melty, look at that. Ah. And so we're gonna take some of these potatoes. We've got some that are cut up. All right. And we're just going to slide this cheese right over the top, like that. 
do a little bit of red onion, unless you're going on a date. <laughs> Well, if he doesn't like run out in it, it's a total deal breaker. A little bit of the speck. And I love to serve this with grainy mustard on the side. And then we'll just do a rough chop of a couple little fresh parsley leaves. Well, this smells delicious. Mm. My gosh, so you have to tell me that they sell this goat cheese here at the French Cheese Board. Absolutely, the French Cheese Board uh, is here to promote all French dairy products and they do have this amazing cheese. Okay, well you heard, heard it here first. Um, am I allowed to eat this? Because <laughs> yes. I'm literally dying right now. This not only smells so great, I can only imagine how good this is. Okay, that's insane. All right, good. I'm Absolutely <laughs> insane. <laughs> And this was so easy to do. Super quick. You could put this out, let your friends come and melt their own cheese, have a little raclette party with goat cheese. With goat cheese. Well, this brought me right back to the south of France and the Hotel de Cap and my time there, except now I'm being a little healthier because I'm eating all the goat cheese. So thank you so much, Jason, thank for you. showing us around. I appreciate it. And thank you so much for joining us on Gallivant. Eat with us, drink with us, travel with us. Mm -hmm.